in those times, my de- deepest, darkest times, he's reached out and looked after me. Eddie has. Yeah. And I, I like. Which is obviously quite emotional for you. Yeah, it is. We we're playing Gold Coast. I don't know what day it was, but um, I was in a rock contest in the middle and um, accidental. I came in, got the hit out, and I think what happened is the person was trying to reach up to grab the ball, came down, and essentially got his finger and went halfway behind my eye and had a, I was assuming he had a fingernail and um, ripped out half my retina. Um, so oh, at the time, playing the game, this is, you get poked in the eye, you think, oh, I've been poked in the eye plenty of times. Is it painful but, immediately? No, it wasn't. And that's why I wasn't like too worried about it. Right. So, so it just, this uh, is second quarter. Just order. a poke in the eye for want of a better term. Just the poke in the eye. And I was like, oh, I can't really see this bit of dots and stuff, whatever. I'll be all right. I'll get through. I'll get to halftime. I'll flag it. Um, so it played out the rest of the quarter. Couldn't really see very well. I was like, oh, my vision will eventually come back as it does. And um, get to halftime. I go into the rooms. So I said, I'll go to the doc, Ruben. I go, hey, Ruben, uh, just want to give you a heads up. I've been poked in the eye. I'm getting these dots flying around everywhere. Uh, and it hasn't gotten back to normal. And he goes, oh, okay, I'll bring you into a little office, you know. He sits me down and um, you know it's bad whenever a doctor goes silent. And like, he looked at my eye and it, right away he goes, ooh. And I was like, ooh, what? And he's like, you're done. You're done for the day. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I'm fine. I feel fine. It's no, no pain. I'm good. He said, no, you're done for the day. You're going straight to Iron Ear. And that, that got me to the point where I was like, ooh, this, is, this is, might be a bit more serious than I thought it was. Which has got to be scary. Uh, oh, 100%. Like I said, like I'm millions, like I'm thousands of miles away from home. I don't have any like kind of family here. And um, I remember getting there. Uh, the ambulance uh, took too long, so we just drove to the Iron Ear on a Sunday. It was a Sunday, actually. Um, drove to the Iron Ear and um, waited for like three hours, and I was in Collingwood kicks. I didn't have anything else. I'm sitting there. Did you wear your footy gear? Yeah, footy gear, essentially. And um, waited for like three hours, and then we went in, and he goes, uh, the doctor looked at me, and he goes, we'll do the eye testing now, and he does the, shines a light in your eye and all that kind of stuff. And even at that point, I was still having floaters, which they call them, the black dots going everywhere. And I was like, oh, this, is, this is weird. I, wonder, I, I didn't understand the enormity of it at that time. And um, the doc comes out and he goes, um, I've got some bad news. And I was like, yeah, what is it? And he goes, um, your left eye, your retina has been detached and it's like quite severe. And um, I was, I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, like surely you just, you know, like I don't know, like you'll figure it out and I'll be fine. And he goes, I've got some more bad news. And I said, what's that? And he goes, your right eye, which is the one that didn't get poked, has also got a detached retina. I said, so wait, so you mean both of my eyes have messed up retinas and like they're both detached. And he goes, yeah, the right's not as bad as the left, but the left's the severe one that's just happened. And I was confused like at that point because I was like, what do you mean? Like I, I, my right eye's fine, I didn't get poked in there. And then um, he goes, man, it's it's actually quite serious. You need to go see like a proper surgeon. And um, so we had talked and got back to the club and stuff. And this was middle of the night on Sunday. I think like that next Monday I went into Dr. Yo and he um, he kind of sat me down. He goes, your season's done. And he goes, you're going to have to get eye surgery as soon as possible. Otherwise this might get, might get worse. And that moment was pretty like kind of confronting. So I was like, oh, well, what do you mean? And he was like, you can, if you don't get this fixed now, you can have permanent damage. And um, you might lose the sight out of your left eye and never be able to see him again. And that kind of hit me where I was like, holy smokes. And I, I remember they, Yo and um, Chris Dixon, who was at the time, his PDM kind of left the room and, had that moment to like sit there and the, like the, the emotions rush over me of kind of season's done. We were looking like a really good team at that time. You know, I was like, well, maybe we can make another grand finals. It's 2019 after we just played a grand final. I was like, cool, you know, we're on this roll. We might be able to make another one. Might be able to finally uh, win this grand final. And um, the whole 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 narrative just flipped on its head. I was like, no, you're getting surgery on your eyes. You might never be able to see again. I'm like, what in the world? Like, what's going on? All this emotion flushed over me. And um, the next day, I just straight in surgery and um, I, it kind of happened so quickly I don't even think people really understood how severe it was well, like it I just, just, this is my whole point Till you told us on the I radio didn't, I didn't really tell many people either I kind of was like, I'm, like I said, I'm a bit stubborn I was going through some stuff in my life my personal life at the time I didn't really want to open up to too many people so I, I went to to get the surgery done the first one and there was going to be three surgeries on my left eye and um, two on my right I think and the first one was essentially they Oh, what was it? He took a um, so he t- sewed it back up and then put had to put heavy liquid in there. So now my like I, I couldn't see on my left eye, like I was blind on my left eye essentially. He put heavy liquid in there and then it was like looking through a pair of goggles after they've been filled with water. So you couldn't I couldn't I couldn't read anything in front of me. I couldn't see anything. 
And then they did cryotherapy on my right eye to help seal the the U-shaped hair on that side before they did the next surgery, which was um, which was a band. So that first bit, I had both my eyes got surgery on, and within three days, essentially, of this happening, I went to being blind and I couldn't see. Like I, out of either eye, out of either eye. Just one very quick one. Yeah, you, you, the eye that didn't was was the other eye just a collateral damage in the incident? No. So we retrospectively looked at it and. The only other time that I got poked in the eye at that point was the grand final against Barras in the first quarter. So old injury. injury that I just never – and I, I kind of knew like whenever I get exhausted, I kind of get fuzzy. Like I was like, oh, it must be exhaustion, you know? Right. And then kinda, once Shit. that happened, I thought, oh, this kind of makes sense now. And okay. um, so, so you, no, that's, that's kind of where that one came so from. So you can't see at this point now. So I can't see. So – um, How scary is that on a scale of one to ten? Oh, the, yeah. It's – the worst feeling you could possibly imagine. You come out of something, you go, I might be legally blind for the rest of my life. And you put full, full trust in a doctor with one of your senses. And I can only presume this at this stage you begin to feel how far you are from your friends and family and your loved Oh, yeah. Ones. Situations like that, you feel a million miles. You feel like you're on a different planet. I bet you do, mate. Um, and mom was like, I'll come over. And I said, no, like I'll be able to handle it myself. And I'm a bit stubborn in that sense. But um, – the first one, the worst bits about it, I've never experienced anything like this. So because of the heavy liquid, it had to be positioned at a certain point. And um, I had to lay on my back looking at the ceiling for 45 minutes of every hour for two weeks straight, blind. So I would lay on my back, couldn't move, couldn't turn one side, couldn't turn the other. And the most I could do was for 15 minutes of every hour, I could get up, go to the toilet, and then come back and then lay down again. This is part of the healing process. It's part of the healing process for two, two, two weeks. And it had to be in like a dark room. And you still can't see? Still can't see anything. Um, medications, like I, literally what I had to do with medications is like I was taking like 20 to 30 drops a, a day. And I colored the bottles one color. So like all I could do is kind of see like the blur of a color. And I would know that that I got to do four times a day on my left eye. And now we get a color of like black. And I was like, that's three times a day on my right eye. And that's how I could figure out this like medications. I was on my own. I was in a one bedroom apartment living on my own, half a world away from home. And I was, I was physically blind. I just sat there and I listened to um, a podcast for like just days on days. And people would call me and I'd answer it and I'd go, who is this? Because I couldn't read the screen, couldn't read anything on my phone. Um, couldn't really ask for help from anyone because I couldn't like I physically couldn't do it. A lot of people have a lot of things to say about this man, but after this experience, I will never, I can't, I can't have a, a negative word to say about him and my experiences with him. And Eddie McGuire reached out and he said, if there's anything you need, want me to come over, send food, whatever it is, and let me know. And that was like, that was like a father figure kind of saying like, I'll have your back in the worst of worst times. And that was something I'll never forget about him. He's always looked after me. And um, I understand from a media perspective, there's things that's happened, but in those times, my deep, deepest, darkest times, he's reached out and looked after me. Eddie has. Yeah. And I like Which is obviously quite emotional for you. Yeah, it is. It. And he's a, he's, a, he's a man that's, yeah, he's been so impactful for me for a long time, ever since I came to this country. But that moment um, probably bonded us forever. And um, he's, he's an absolute legend. Golly. Hey guys, Howie here. Thank you so much for watching the Howie Games YouTube channel. We appreciate your support. Now, if you want to hear the full podcast, you can just click on the link directly below. If you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, which would be fantastic, bang, click right there. And if you want to see more clips, highlights, and updates from the Howie Games, just go that way. Thanks so much. As always, take it easy, and peace and love.